All right, let's jump into today's workshop, which I'm actually really excited about. Let me present this one. Cool. So this has been such an ongoing topic for so many women that I wanted to do a workshop about it today just so that we can address and sort of pull apart a lot of those causes around PMS um, and sort of different supplements, dietary things that you can be doing to supporting uh, PMS, so premenstrual sin symptoms, syndrome, um, for so many of you. So it is such an ongoing issue. So some of you will be taking some of these supplements already. There's additional things you can add in. When you work one-on-one -on -one with me, I don't give you every single supplement that you can take for one condition because it'll be too much and you'll get too overwhelmed with the amount of supplements um, and what to take and stuff. So that's why usually you're only taking one or two things, but there's always more that you can be doing. So I'm going to address some of those today and what that looks like. Um, so PMS, the premenstrual symptoms. So 75% of women experience these. So that's things like your headaches, your bloating, uh, problems with your sleep, your mood swings. Um, so any of those kind of symptoms that kind of, they not only make you feel crap, but they do also affect your relationships. Some women struggle with PMDD as well. So that is kind of that next level of symptoms and severity, but most commonly I'm seeing the PMS coming from the higher estrogen and the lower progesterone. So as you can see in this panel from the Dutch test here, that is the primary reason I see PMS in the women that I work with. Sometimes your progesterone is in range, but your estrogen is also too high. So it's not always a progesterone deficiency. It's often most of the time just a uh, excess of estrogen that's causing this. So we love to see when periods are on time, which you can see on the right-hand side here. So I've had quite a few clients lately who have not gotten any symptoms in the lead up to their periods, which is awesome because usually they know that their period's coming and that you have all those PMS symptoms. But when we start to work on sort of the root cause of PMS, we see a big shift that like this one here, she's like, cool, I only had two acne spots. Um, usually my skin's so sensitive because of all the cystic acne. So acne is a really big one in that lead up to the PMS. And I still get a couple spots around my mouth if I've had a stressful month or on my jawline where I'll go, oh, I've overdid it this month. That's why I'm reacting. So when it comes to medications and things around PMS, um, things like your Advil, um, your ibuprofen, those kinds of things um, can make the symptoms worse over time, but they do suppress um, some of those symptoms short term. So it's always kind of going, well, you know, where do I start? Can we start with the natural stuff? pull back on some of those medications and then try to meet somewhere in the middle and then hopefully get off the medications. Um, but I'll touch on some of those natural alternatives. So we know that they can lower progesterone over time. Um, also using the pill masks a lot of these symptoms and suppresses your hormones, okay? So being on the pill may have short-term benefits and it may be what you need to do right now. But long-term, we know it can impact your pregnancy, it can impact your mood, it can impact your weight, um, and it can also impact your skin and your hair as well. So Yes, it has a time and a place. And I've done webinars around birth control before, around ovulation, um, around tracking ovulation. So if you want to go back and watch some of those, definitely do that. But like I said, like if you're going to be on the pill, make sure you're supporting your zinc, your Bs, your magnesium, your gut microbiome and your liver, just so that we can clear all those um, extra hormones effectively. Um, and then sort of working on the root cause of, you know, maybe it's your irregular periods or it's your acne or whatever it is, knowing that often it comes down to a cortisol issue, which like you can see on this Dutch test here, 
cortisol is completely tanked, free cortisol, and also production of cortisol is really low as well. So often things like that, or if you have really elevated DHEA, that will be causing a lot of acne and a lot of symptoms as well. So you can definitely be on the pill, support your body while you're on it, and then also work on the root cause. Uh, cool. So other things that are going to impact, impact your PMS, so sugar, so your diet intake that week, your alcohol intake that week, your stress levels that week, your blood sugar imbalances. So how did you eat that week? Okay, were you having protein, carbs, fats at every meal, four, five, six, seven meals a day, eating consistently, feeding, nourishing your body? Awesome. Or you skipping meals. So classic examples, whenever I go traveling, I always get um, irregularities in my cycle and I always get a cystic acne flare up, okay? Because I'm not eating as consistently because you're traveling and you're out of routine and you might, you know, have a big breakfast somewhere and then not eat till late afternoon and then you might have a wine or you might do so it's all out of routine so I do find very quickly because my body is so sensitive I see those changes so for some people that might just be stress around the home or stress with work if that happens they see that reflected in their um, period very quickly so when we bring those estrogen levels into balance and that inflammation's dampened, we often see changes in weight. You have more energy. You can do more exercise, okay? And then when we give those adrenal glands some support, things like your sugar cravings disappear. So this is a classic example. You can see that red line there of how bottomed out this lady's adrenal glands are. So it should be somewhere in between the two of these, that high end range and that low end range. And she is right down the bottom, which is going to give you a lot of PMS symptoms and also affect a lot of your sex hormones. So the imbalance in hormones is one thing that can cause the PMS. So if that estrogen is really dominant, like I said at the start, and that progesterone is really low, so we can see that here with that sex hormone imbalance, that's going to give you PMS. Like I said, your diet will impact it, your caffeine, your alcohol intake, stress, so whether that's um, environmental, whether that's um, financial, whether that's family, whether that's relationship, they will all impact that whole PMS picture. Constipation. If you're constipated, I expect you to have more PMS because your body is not releasing that estrogen, okay? So you're not um, processing that estrogen properly and then we can lead to that estrogen dominance. And then also a lack of exercise. You need that A, for bowel movements, B, for mental health or mental, um, you know, yeah, mental health, and C also for energy and stabilize those blood sugars as well. So some remedies for PMS, the stuff that you guys really want to know, your magnesium glycinate. So I carry on to you guys about citrate for bowel movements, glycinate for absorption and for PMS, okay? So 300 to 400 milligrams. So usually you guys are taking around two tablets AM, PM, which would be around 300, 400 AM, MPM, okay? One week before your period, up that dose to 600 milligrams at night. And this is why I like you. I, mean, I know it means you have more supplements, but I like to have singular doses of extra B6 or extra magnesium because then we can boost that one supplement leading up to your um, period. Your fiber is a really big one. I'll touch in gut health in a sec. Um, your herbs. So a lot of you are taking different herbal things like DIM or B vitamins or stuff that has um, different uh, Chinese herbs in it, which help support stuff like your ovarian and stuff, which helps support that hormonal balance, as well as those Bs are really, really important for that estrogen. Okay. So getting that high dose of B1 will help with the menstrual cramps, but also B6, I find. So a B complex, but a B6. Uh, and I think I've got a another slide on that. Leading up onto your period, I'll get that therapeutically for you a week before your period. That B6 is amazing. 
Uh, so megas are really, really important as well. If you are not eating enough salmon or sardines, a little bit of chia is fine as well, a little bit of walnuts, but I do really recommend you take a fish oil supplement, okay? A really good quality one because it's so if you don't spend proper money on a fish oil supplement, you're getting crap. That is the bottom line to it. It's not, don't do it then. Then go eat sardines a couple times a week if you're not willing to spend more money on a good quality fish oil. Um, so you can do like ground, fresh ground flax seeds as well, which are great. But again, things like your nuts and your seeds, I keep in the fridge or the freezer as well because things do oxidize, okay, guys? So if you're buying ground flax meal, often it's been sitting there for a while and it's just not as healthy or beneficial. Um adaptogens are really helpful as well okay so these are things like some of these guys are on adaptex or adrena forte or Winthania. so things that help to balance your body's response to stress okay so this is going to help regulate that cortisol and help to produce enough cortisol but also stop you going into that stress state and creating you know more stress hormones and stopping that progesterone, which is what you actually want. So if you're not ovulating, you're not making enough progesterone, which makes you feel like crap, right? So we don't want that Asian dominance. We want those nice balanced hormones, but we need to support that adrenal gland to be able to get that um, beautiful hormone picture, which a lot of you guys would see in your Dutch testing as well. So other things to stop the cramping and the inflammation. So when you're more inflamed, or whether that's like we've talked about diet, stress, alcohol, caffeine, any of those things, not exercising enough, you convert testosterone to estrogen, giving you more estrogen, okay? So like I've said, that lower progesterone, or even if progesterone is fine, but that high estrogen gives you a lot of these symptoms, okay? So we want to calm down that inflammation. If you look at it here, you can see this DHEA, see this aromatase here? If we get testosterone often drops in these guys and estrogen gets really high, okay? And that can give you a lot of your PMS symptoms. So we go, okay, we don't want that extra testosterone going to estrogen. So we want a low inflammatory diet. So that's why a lot of you remove gluten, remove dairy, remove a lot of those processed foods or those foods that you're sensitive to just to calm that whole picture. And then you can add stuff in to help as well, like turmeric, a really um, bioactive dose of turmeric is really, really good as well. It calms that whole inflammatory picture. So you want... If you can get one that has a combination of these three bioactive ingredients in it, um, they have the most protective effects. Again, you can get some turmeric from your diet, but you're not going to get the quality and the quantity as opposed to supplementing. And that's what I mean. Like if you start to add all this stuff and go, oh, okay, I need my magnesium, I need my omegas, I need my turmeric, I need my B6, you know, I need my raspberry leaf tea, I need whatever else it is. Okay, so it is your knack. You need quite a lot of different supplements, but you need them singly so that you can high dose them enough, okay? So when our progesterone's down, our cortisol's up, and that's when we sort of get that extra weight, you get the breast tenderness, you get the anxiety, the painful periods, and that's because of that aromatase. So also when insulin goes up, then that aromatase goes up and turns your other hormones into estrogen. So insulin is when you're not regulating those blood sugars. So you're not eating protein at every meal. You're not eating regularly enough. You're not eating enough food. You're skipping carbohydrates. All those things are going to stuff up your insulin, which is going to play around with that estrogen to progesterone, um, estrogen from testosterone, sorry. So strength training is really beneficial here, um, but also like your Vitex, a lot of you taking Vitex or Chase Tree, your turmeric, your calcium, deglucronate, or your DIM, which we've chatted about, your omegas and your adaptogenic herbs. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on, because some of you are taking B supplements or prenatals, um, is to get folic um your folate versus your folic acid and just make sure 
that you're not taking folic acid. So I like to get an activated version of folate instead, um, which is going to be obviously activated bees are really, really important as well, but not getting a folic acid if you can. Sometimes it is in supplements and I understand that as well, but trying to get the activated form of folate is really important. Um, and then mood swings. So last one here is that um, some of you guys are taking SSRIs um, to help with mood swings or um, being depressed or, you know, those kinds of things. So just that lower mental state. We know that a B complex and a magnesium make a really, really big difference on moods. So it's got to be that sort of eight to 12 week span. So all of your supplements, and that's why I always say minimum of six months because all your supplements take around three months to really see that change in your body. So you need to be consistent with them, okay? And then lastly, sort of on gut health, that sense of one, are you eating enough fiber every day? So you're eating that 25 to 30 grams, check chronometer and make sure you are. Um, are you having your raw carrots? Are you having your kiwi fruit? Um, you know, what are you eating with your other meals? Are you having some um, other fruits, bananas, berries, things to boost up that fiber intake? And then also having like a general spore-based probiotic is my go-to as a broad spectrum type thing. So that's your SB Pro, so your Saccharomyces boulardii, or mega spore if you're on the mega mucosa stuff as well, mega microbiome products, they're spore-based um, probiotics. are sort of the ones that I just take generally for good gut health and for regular bowel movements, um, just supporting that. And then also, if you can, your lactobacillus species, which are going to support that vaginal health aspect. Um, and then your beta glucuronidase. So this is a really important one on your stool test, which let's see, I don't have it pulled up on there, but you will see it down the bottom of your stool testing. And it's basically that phase three of liver detoxification. So that estrogen goes through phase one of the liver, goes through phase two of the liver, and then that beta glucuronidase enzyme binds it all up and you poo it out at the other end, okay? So since some of you guys, this is highly elevated, which means means it's tearing apart those estrogen bonds, which means it's reabsorbing back into your system, okay? Um, so this is what an undergrown microbiome can look like. So you want all these little spiderweb points. So if you look at this proteobacteria, you, that's nicely on point. So you want them on these little points here. And this one, we can see that actinose undergrown, the bacteroides is overgrown, the firmicutes is undergrown, this whole picture is undergrown and it's heavily geared towards proteobacteria, which is more of a inflammatory bacteria. Okay. So balancing that microbiome, getting rid of infections like SIBO or any imbalance or dysbiotic bacteria, is going to make a big difference on your PMS and your hormonal health because we can remove that cortisol response to stuff in your gut. We can support regular bowel movements. We can bind up your foods properly. We can absorb nutrients properly. All those things which are critical for you feeling good. Awesome. So if you have any questions on those, please holler or reach out. I love hearing from you. And yeah, I hope you found something beneficial in that.